Hi there, Shalini Mittal here from Tech Gatha and this video we will see one of the most important concept in methods that is how the values are passed in methods. Many people also like to say it as call by value or call by reference. But ideally in Java it's all about the value that a variable stores. It just passes that. To understand this let's take an example. So I guess example will make more sense. Suppose I have a method called as m1, it takes a parameter x, okay, it's a normal integer. Now, I'll just write So, I'll just print the value of x in m1 before I make any changes to x. I will be again printing the value of x in m1 after I make changes to x, I say x is equals to x plus 10. A simple straightforward code, I pass in the value of x, I print it, modify, again print it. For my main function, I declare a variable a which holds a value as 10. I print the value of in, I print the value of a in main before I invoke the function m1. I invoke m1 and I pass a and then I again print the value of a in main after I call the function, right? Now if you execute, of course the code starts execution from the main, a is initialized to 10. So then I can say this a is a variable which is having a memory location wherein the value 10 gets stored. And suppose this a has a memory location, just a hypothetical value, say 200. I print in the value of a, definitely it prints 10. I pass the value of a and I call the function m1 passing in a. So you see when I print a, it just prints what? 10. So it passes whatever it stores. So a stores the value of 10, that is what it passes. So here your x is a variable which is assigned a memory location wherein I'm actually saying x is equals to a. What is a holding? A value that is 10. What am I passing? Just 10. So 10 gets stored in another memory location and say it is 400. So I print x over here. Of course, it prints 10. I say x is x plus 10. I modify the value of x and this now becomes 20. I print here, it prints 20. But then you would notice that I'm modifying the value of x that is at this memory location, this is not touched. So when I when the control comes back here to this line of statement, it prints the value of a and the value of a is still 10, it prints 10, okay? What you are passing is just the value of a. So you can say this is call by value. Just to prove, let's execute. I'll say command k to compile and we'll just see, okay. And I have this main function and can you see? A, it prints 10. X, it prints 10. X in M1, after you change, prints 20. But can you see A still prints 10? Now, Say for example, I create one more method and let me give it a name as m2 but this time this x will be an array and then I'll print x. So let me say I'll, I'm printing x array. I want to print the value at index 0. So I print at 0. Now this is definitely m2. I say x of 0 is equals to x of 0 plus 10. Let me print this again over here and I say x in m2. So this x is an array so just to identify between this and this and then I am going to print after that is x of 0. Fine. Now let's create an array over here. So I will say int b which is equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We'll print 
b of 0 in main before I call the function. Again, let's say I'll print the array b before I call the m1. Again, the same statements. And then here I call m2 passing in the array b. So again, here it will be b in main after and b of 0 in main after. So now the way this works is, see I create an array b. So what happens? You have an array which has five values, 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Of course, the first value say is at memory address 100. Okay. So again, the second one will be 100 plus 4, 104 and so on the addresses goes on. Now B is pointing to five values. So there is one, there is two, there is three, there is four and there is five. Now when I say I print just B, okay, what, what will it print? Because there are five values, it doesn't know exactly what to print. So ideally, what B stores is just the reference to the first memory location. That is, what is stored in B, just B, is the memory address. When I say B of 0, of course, it is 1. I pass in B. So what is stored in B is the memory address. What gets passed from B to the M2 function, so what gets passed from B to the M2 function over here, this x gets this address. So your x is now pointing to the same array. So here when you say print the value of x, it's pointing to the same array. When I say x of 0, it indeed points to value 1. When I say x of 0 change to 10, it is modifying this and making it 11. I print the x, it's the same array. I print x of 0, it prints 11. When the control comes back here, this b is pointing to the same array and this b of 0 hence then prints 11. Because b stores a reference to a memory location, this can be called as call by reference. So whenever, so let's just compile and see. So I've compiled and let's execute. Can you see B, the memory address? See this address, this address, this address. They all are same, pointing to same memory location. So here B of 0 is 1. In M2, before is also 1. After it's 11. And can you see B of 0? Here it is 11. Whenever a method takes a parameter which is an array or even if it's a class object, it is, you can say, call or pass by reference. Because what you are passing is whatever this B, st B stores. So B stores the reference, so it passes the reference. What, what gets passed to X is the value. Why? Because what gets stored in A is the value. What it passes is the value. So it's very important to understand when you are passing arrays, if you do any modifications in the method. So then I can say, that this x over here is a formal parameter. So what's a formal parameter? Are the parameters that you declare at the time of declaring your functions. Now, and this b is actually the actual parameter which is being passed, actual values which are being passed to the functions. So when it's array is a class object, any changes in the formal parameter affects the actual parameter. But when you are just passing primitives, you are passing values, changes in actual, changes in formal parameters does not reflect changes in the actual parameters. So with this, we come to an end of this interesting video. Happy learning, take care and bye-bye.